G'day, it's Robbie here again. Well, recently I got a, an email from a viewer and he asked me, what's the most accurate way of taking a reading off of a lathe? Should he be using a dial indicator like the Mitsu Toyo? Or should he be using a test indicator like a Shea? He was about to buy some measuring equipment. I said, well, if you want it, an accurate reading measurement, you'll definitely go with the dial indicator because it gives you an absolute figure and if it's set up correctly at 90 degrees to the job there'll be no cosine error. Now with our test indicator, even when you've got it set up as close to parallel as possible, there will always be some degree of cosine error come into it. So do with the fact that one is a direct acting probe, another one transcribes an arc and that will add to your measurement. The figure will always be a plus as far as um, absolute sizes go in the same situation. So I thought, OK, this is a good, good opportunity to set up a rig to show the difference between the two measuring devices. This is an absolute measuring device. This is uh, a run out, a variation indicator. It doesn't mean to say that this is not accurate enough to do what it's meant to be doing, that is measuring run out. It's just that if you take that figure as being totally accurate, you're going to be off. This is going to be totally accurate. This will always have an error factor. So we'll run some tests and I'll show you what the situation is. Let's get on with it. Okay, first off we'll take a reading with the Michitoyo and the Shea test indicator with the Shea set up the way it should be set up and that is with the probe as parallel as possible to the, the face of the job and that's pretty good. I've got it in you know, pretty close. So we'll advance the Mitsutoyo up to 0.3 and we'll see what the Shea shows. So the Mitsutoyo is at 0.3 and the Shea is at 0.315 so there's a difference. You can say okay the Shea is not as accurate as the Michio Toyo, that's what, that's what it'll be, it's the Shea, it couldn't possibly be anything else. But no, it's the cosine factor. And I'll show you how that will vary, so what we'll do is we'll reset this now with a 45 degree angle and then we'll repeat the experiment again. And you'll see that the cosine factor will increase substantially. So let's do it. Okay, so now we've got the point on about a 45 degree angle on the test indicator. We'll bring them up to zero. And we'll go up to 0.3 on the uh, dial indicator and we'll see what it shows on the test indicator. Now the test indicator should show more because the cosine error will always add to the to the figure. There you go, look at that. Look at that. That's a a big a big increase in in the uh, the diameter. It's uh not showing point three five Mmm. Wind it back. See if they go back to zero. And they do. So they're both, you know, pretty accurate. Now, that shows you why it's important that you always keep your uh, test indicator pointer parallel to the to the job that you're measuring. 
Okay, just before we close off on this short video, I'll show you something else you should consider too, and that's flex in the mount. I mean, it's no good in having a high quality measuring device if you've got flex in, in your mount. And this is a standard uh, mag base. It's, uh, it's a bit of Toyo copy. It's not a genuine bit of Toyo. I do have a genuine one as well, but this is what most people will be using. So we'll, we've got the test indicator zeroed against the arm. We'll bring the, the dial indicator against the work and we'll look for the deflection in the arm. So we'll bring it in. 0.2. And you can see the deflection. It's uh, 0 0.015. Apply some more pressure. It's point zero two now, so you can see what's happening as you're compressing the spring in the dial indicator. So it's putting more thrust back onto the arm, and it's introducing an error factor. something more to consider. It hasn't got out much more, so it looks like we've pretty much compressed the arm to the point where anything uh, more isn't going to have a major effect on it. So when you set up your dial indicator, put a decent load on it before you take your readings, because that way you're not going to get any waver in the arm uh, at, the he at the heavier pressure. At the lighter pressure things can flex around a lot more. So it's just another little tip to help you get better accuracy. Now of the two units, the dial indicator and the test indicator, which one do I use the most? Test indicator, definitely. Very rarely use the dial indicator. They're bulkier, they can foul the jaws easier, the mount is heavier and on a small lathe particularly it's going to be a bugbear, pain of the ass. These little mounts are very, very good and the actual pressure that you need to put on the tip of a test indicator is a fraction of what the spring loading on a dial indicator is. So test indicators are super sensitive as far as the load goes, you don't need to hardly put any load on it. I could demonstrate it by putting a, you know, a feeler gauge against it and watching the deflection in the feeler gauge, but I won't. This video is long enough as it is. But take it from me, yes, due to the long travel that you've got, they have to have a fairly, you know, long spring. And of course, the longer the spring, the more compression factor there's going to generally be and uh, there's just a bigger device all around. Okay, well that's it from me. There's something to think about. Interesting stuff. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Cheers.